It's the next level. I spent the last few days going over it top to bottom, like you asked. Show me. You sure did? <sighs> See these flecks? They look like gold, but they're much harder. I've only seen them one other place. War woman's armor. Sodium crystals. Aquarius. Those are from Darkwing's throwing weapons. He's tangled with a few of my other clients. Are those burns? Friction burns. From something moving real fast. Red Rush. <sighs> okay. Okay, this... This only proves Nolan and the Guardians fought. Maybe they attacked him first. Maybe, maybe he was trying to protect their legacy. Maybe. But there's also this. Blood begins to oxidize when exposed to air. I can measure it. See how long since it was spilled. This is the oldest blood on the suit. Panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Jamie. And this week, or this episode, we're covering Invincible Season 1, Episode 6. You look kind of dead. Which, a lot of them dead. So yes. this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about Episode 6 of Amazon Prime's Invincible. And like I always say, if you haven't watched the episode, go back, watch it, come back, listen to the podcast, and please give any information you like regarding what we said. And the synopsis for this particular episode is Mark joins William and Amber on a campus visit to Upstate University, hoping to discover a new future for himself. Debbie makes her own disturbing discovery. Very disturbing. Very disturbing. <laughs> but it's something that we all knew, but she just found out for herself. Right. <laughs> so what were your initial thoughts? Um, I thought it was a little slower than some of the other episodes, but not in a bad way. Hmm. Like, I thought, you know, we only had one bad guy. We didn't go too much into the side stuff that's going on. Mm -hmm. And I did like that, you know, the one bad guy we got was another, like, formidable opponent, not just someone who could be gotten rid of quickly. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about the bad guy that was in this. That, yes, yeah, well, got... Sinclair's men, whatever they are. Yeah, and but he was taken away. I don't think this is the last we're going to see of him. Absolutely not. So, yeah, my thoughts. Were, I thought it was a really good episode. I enjoyed it. Like you stated, I agree. Yes, it was fairly slow <laughs> to build up, but a lot of it was more the dramatic talk. I think a lot of it that made me enjoy it more was the comedic aspect of it with William and his uh, love for Rick. <laughs> that was so cute. It was so cute just to watch that. And his finally learning of Mark's being invincible. Also adorable. Adorable, yeah. I didn't put that a lot of that stuff in there, but it's pretty funny and it's cute. Yeah, the start over with Amber and how Mark wants to look more into his future of not just being a superhero, but he was looking at more of his academics. But, you know, for the most part, I think he was looking to get back with Amber and get on her good side. Yeah, I don't think he's embraced his superhero-ness as much as his father has. No, no. Well, he's still part human, so he's going to have that human quality. And, you know, he, he's not true Viltramite, if you think about it. And he's right. a kid. And he's been a normal human except for the last three months. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, well, we thought we could go deeper with that with our top five and our highlights. So what was your number five? You being a superhero is the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. Amber will forgive you. She always does. I'm not so sure this time. Yeah, you might be right. Now take me flying or I'm going to tell everyone you're invincible. Sorry, not sorry. Oh, oh, oh. Woo, yeah. There, okay? Can I try it on? What? Your suit, can I try it? Absolutely not. Um, I never if I was the music. There's always like a song or two in each episode that kind of stand out to me. Yeah. In this one, the song Knock Me Off My Feet. 
It was mm-hmm. when started when Eve was building her new home, which I thought was like a cool thought. Like, hey, you know, she can do this. She's going to knock the world off its feet. And then um, mm-hmm. it still kept playing when they got to the beginning of the, you know, the campus visit mm-hmm. where they were all hanging out like right before the attack. And I thought it also fit with like, you know, Mark and Amber still trying to get their groove back together and William just being obsessed with Rick and adorable. And I, th- I thought that song worked really well for both scenes. And then at the end, the song, um, which is chapter six, Many Mistakes, which is mm-hmm. funny that they used it in episode six. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that song I thought was absolutely perfect with the regrets between Mark and Amber. And I think Mark also is feeling bad that if he had listen to William, he might have been able to stop Rick from getting attacked or, you know, help him out. And then where it ends with the words, I fucked up right as Nolan is standing by his front door. I thought that was, I just loved the way that played out. I thought it was really well done. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I have to agree though with, with Mark and not going to look for Rick for William. He was too stuck in his own little world with Amber yeah. and, being, and wallowing in his own pity. And then when he realizes it, he has to go out and finally help, which was good. But, you know, we all make mistakes and kids are kids and they're still growing and still learning. Yeah. And, you know, William kind of blatantly said, stated, I need your help. The phone just cut off. He's he's in trouble. And Mark was too busy wallowing in his own self-pity. And the music did really enhance the... Uh, the scenes itself, like you said, with Eve, I really enjoyed that. And I love hearing music like that. They're doing that more and more in a lot of shows lately, it seems. Yeah, they're doing really well with it. Well, my number five, well, that would be seeing the aftermath of the battle that we left off at and Monster Girl surviving. Well, Black Samson, we thought he was dead. He's, <gasps> right? he's He lives. Yay. I was so excited. I was cheering. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, he's not dead." <laughs> as soon as you saw the heartbeat go on the on the monitor, you're like, "Yes, yes, this is good." <laughs> and of course, Mark survived. Apparently, he had a deep shot or a deep wound that went to his spine, but it's it was healing and it did very well. So, with his enhanced abilities, I guess he healed faster. He was in a hospital for a while, but he he came back. And he had those bruises all over his face. Yeah. Well, at least yeah, you know, he had to have some remnants of what happened. Monster Girl, unfortunately, the the hospital scene where she was inside and they were trying to intubate her and she's monsters out at that point. That was crazy. That was crazy. And then Robot offering his help because he knows that physiology and he's aware of it. But they were like, no. <laughs> and then eventually they, they let him do what he ne- they needed to do. But, yeah, I was just glad to see, you know. Black Samson back, so it was like, yeah. okay, no casualty at this point, so. Now, did he get his powers back, or did he, is he just healed? I like, think I'm not quite that was sure what was hinting out. at, because he's he usually works with the equipment that they put him on. He's enhanced with, like, whatever suit they gave him, or mechanical suit, and he had abilities, and I'm thinking with this, his abilities kind of kicked in to some degree. Now, I'm hoping they come back full force. Maybe you could smack Rex around a little bit. <laughs> Somebody needs to. <laughs> so, your number four? My number four is Robot. Mm. His love of Monster Girl is just so sweet. And for that half second where you thought he died, like trying to get her the medicine she need or the flower for the medicine that she needed, mm-hmm. and how much he's figured out about her physiology, which he had, you know. Hasn't mentioned, you know, he wasn't that into anybody else's recovery. It was just her. <laughs> yeah, especially when, when Samson brings it up to him. He goes, well, you never really did that for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then um, when she wakes up and she's like, wait, you were here with me the whole time. Like, maybe she realized, like, I think she realizes he's got feelings for her. Yeah. I don't think they're going to be reciprocated. I don't, I no. don't see her falling for him. Nope. She's getting the creeper vibe from a robot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's also with him the question of what is he, what is that body he's growing? What is going on with mm. him and the Mahler twins? And then, you know, even at the very end with the Mahler twins going to the cemetery where those kids were trying to, you know, get superpowers, like, do they, are they trying to make a new super? That's what I'm thinking. That's but what I'm thinking too. From whose blood though? Right. Whose grave were they in? 
Well, the the kids were digging up the grave. One of them states that, of course, you drink some, uh, some out of the skull of an immortal and you gain their abilities or something. Right, but I don't know whose skull they were trying to get Exactly. To. They didn't give us a grave site or a tombstone to see a name or anything on it. No, I just love the idea that he's like, I saw it on a Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> teenagers being teenagers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Robots got to be up to making a super somehow. Yes. Maybe there is something to that Reddit rumor. I mean, probably not drinking from the skull, but there might be something to the, you can use the body of a super to make another one. Yeah, and the Muller twins seem to know how to do this. They they know something of what robot's up to. Yeah. Otherwise, why would they be at the grave site? Yeah. Well, at least they know part of what he's up to. They don't seem to know everything just yet. Exactly. It's like part of the that DNA. We saw eyes, a uh, nervous system, a brain yeah. in that container, and it was growing. So what else could they add to it from something that was in a gravesite uh, or somebody's coffin to yeah. add to it? You know, what? What is there some key element that they need? I wonder how gruesome that's going to be when we get to that point when we right? see that. Because if he, the Mall Twins take that body out, what do we have that they're going to add to it? Oh, we got to <laughs> take the brain or the heart. If the heart's still there. Right. And if it's anybody from the Guardians that died that uh, Omni-Man killed and it's one of their graves. It has to be. Yeah. It has to be somebody from there. Because they were recently dead at that point. Yeah. And that investigation is still going. So those kids were able to easily go get to the grave site and dig it up. So I'm curious if uh, which one of those they're going to use. Yeah. Probably not the alien. What was the one that Lauren Cohan played? Forgot. I don't remember. Like, <laughs> it feels like forever ago since we saw them. So I like. Yeah, I know it's the first too. one, but you know, it, it, we could speculate all we want. But I think that's a good start of figuring out what they're up to. It has to be somebody from the Guardians that they're trying to dig up and utilize. Yeah. And I'm thinking that, like you, with the with robot and the the Mauler twins, they're looking to create another super. I don't know if it's something that robots going to put his mind into or something. <laughs> oh yeah. So it, it would to be what interesting end as well. Well, think like, about it. He's a robot. So he wants to put his consciousness into a physical body. So maybe that monster girl wants him or maybe he's yeah. building up his own army for something. Ooh, that would be creepy. We'll see. <laughs> well, my number four would be William. Just the fact that we see him as he is. He, he is a homosexual, but he is in love with a guy that he met at college at one point, Rick. And then Mark invites himself to go with him to that college to to check it out because William wanted to go for something in uh, medical at one point. Yeah. But, you know, mostly he was meant to go see Rick and <laughs> be with Rick. And I think Mark was, like, kind of cutting in on his action at that point. Absolutely. <laughs> but Mark's idea was, like, oh, I'll bring Amber Maybe it's some place we could both go together, and it's a way for him to broaden his academic career, maybe, and plus strengthening his, you know, strengthening his relationship with Amber because they just started again. It was a whole do over, but as we know, that doesn't go well. But I <laughs> no. just love the the fact of seeing William ogling over Rick the whole oh, episode. It was adorable. But it was so cute. The perfect ending, though, is with how. William was able to bring Rick back during the fight. And yes. I love Sinclair's reaction going, what? It's <laughs> <laughs> like, that moment by the lake, we had sex. It was the best thing in my life. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> it was cute. It was so cute. And the whole car ride to the college, like, William was just talking about Rick the entire ride. And which... Mark's completely oblivious. He goes, what? <laughs> and then when they get out of the car and he takes their luggage, and uh, it's like Amber and William are both, like, ogling his butt. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Mark's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, Amber. Well, Amber was, like, totally in with William on, like, oh, yeah, this he sounds great, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the hair, does that matter? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> really? What about my hair? I would be thinking that personally. It's like, what about my hair? But then again, I have no hair. <laughs> yeah, but you probably did in high school. <laughs> I did, yeah. And in my 20s, but, you know, genetics don't work out, so you just shit it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that was, your, that was your number three? Or that no, was that? your number four, so we're on my number three. Yeah. Eve is my number three. 
Okay. I re- I'm really digging her. Um, I like that she was strong enough to get out from under her parents who still suck. Yeah. I mean, I get, I get the parents being scared for her. Like, I'm a parent. I'm scared for my kids. I get it. But the way they're going about things, they just stink. They're not allowing her <laughs> independence or free thinking is what it is. And you got to let loose the leash at times when it comes to kids to find their own way. They're yeah. going to make mistakes. But with them, they're just overtly parenting at this point. Like, no, you got to stay in. You can't. Yeah. You got to stop this superhero crap and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, all right, you're just suffocating her at this point. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that, too. And I I, I like the fact that we get to see her story a little bit. Yeah. And then also not only that, but she, like she set everything up and then she immediately went out and got some validation by finding things to do to help people Mm -hmm. and she didn't need anybody else's help yeah i'm also worried like her dad made the statement that saving the world will get her killed and i'm really worried that that's foreshadowing yes yeah (laughs) these shows have a tendency of doing that with saying certain things where it does happen or you see a symbol or something and it comes into play later on i don't think we'll see her dead most likely (laughs) really hurt at that point and maybe that's when mark comes around yeah you know, and my three, my third would be the same thing. You know, it's to tag on with what you got Eve's awakening in the world and trying to find herself. You know, you know, after she leaves her parents, she creates that tree house, that cool tree house. <laughs> and I didn't even realize that was part of her power skill. Right. She does need some windows. I mean, I'm not sure what's going to happen when it rains or can she control the white rain and keep it from getting in? <laughs> yeah. Plus, she has no electricity at that point, And you know how kids love their, you well, know, she phones. had those lights. She's got something going on in there. Yeah. But it's pretty cool. I, I just like the idea of the treehouse. At least, you know, no animals could get up there. Well, birds right. maybe and squirrels, but. <laughs> that was a really cool setup. I, w- I would totally hang out in there. I'd rent it for an Airbnb one night, one weekend. <laughs> <laughs> her, her views are, in my opinion, very optimistic and very giving. It's yeah. like very selfless, which is very good. But sometime, sometimes that could bite you in the ass in the end. And uh, as we all know, the these are kids still they're still learning you know she might be more experienced than mark but she's still growing as a person herself and you're number two uh what i'm calling the cybermen (laughs) 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 because we never got a name for them yeah yeah uh but sinclair's experiments um i mean my right off the bat i got a very strong doctor who vibe from them Mm. with the cyberman like you know the perfect he's trying to perfect humanity And, um, that was, you know, that's what the Cybermen do too. Like they're trying to perfect humanity and take our humanity's flaws. So it was huge Doctor Who vibes, but like Sinclair, when he was talking in the class and saying how human failure is an engineering challenge to solve, I thought that was a really interesting way of looking at things. I mean, he was obviously wrong, but it was an interesting (laughs) (laughs) point of view. Well, the way he was bringing it up is the mechanics of humans, the the grades over time. Even the professor is saying that the human body eventually loses that function and slowly breaks down over time. So with Sinclair, he just enhanced that to the point where it's more mechanical. Now, I couldn't figure out if, because he was injecting people with things. Yeah, I'm not sure all of what he was doing yeah and his thought was like okay you could replace like the heart you could replace the physical joints their legs or arms or whatever the mind is still is what was needed but in his case he was manipulating the mind for his own army and taking pieces of it out as we saw (laughs) correct yeah lobotomizing some of these people for what they need he was he had an interesting concept but just went a little too far and right. as we know, that genius borders on insanity. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, and to link it with another thing, like he was, this had like a little bit of a Harry Potter vibe where like he underestimated the human part of human mm-hmm. and just like Voldemort underestimated love. Correct. So, he, you know, Sinclair underestimated like the human you know, love as it boils down to, too. And, you know, his creatures didn't want to live with what he did to them and love was able to take them down and take him down (laughs) which i thought was pretty cool you know something as smart as he is he just doesn't understand yeah wow he has no empathy towards others is what it is he's more the scientific genius i think where it's his vision that's it which is very opposite you would think that robot would be more like that but robot in this case has feelings right 
<laughs> but there's something underlying that too, because he's so advanced that he's got some sort of plan that we have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out eventually. And we'll yeah, find out where all sure. our guesses are wrong. <laughs> yeah, maybe at the end of the season, you never know. It's like, finally, oh, that's yeah. what that was. <laughs> my number two would be Sinclair as well. But, you know, I just put flat out my notes saying Sinclair is an asshole. <laughs> he is totally an asshole. And he's the perfect villain. But I don't think, that, you know, like I stated before, this is the last that we're going to actually see of him. You know, he, no. it, they took him away. Cecil and them took him away and they even admired his work at what they were doing and how, wow, they really screwed up Mark at this point too. They beat him up and he was still healing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he is, Sinclair is absolutely going to help Cecil yeah. with taking, with, with his goal of taking down Omni-Man. Like, I mean, Cecil was way enamored with the tech. Kind of similar to like, if you think about it, manipulative genius mastermind or crazy person villain being used in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that we're working on with uh, when we cover Falcon and Winter Soldier, like Baron Zemo. You know, that's yeah. it's one of those things where it's like, all right, well, we're going to use him because we need him for his knowledge of this. So I yeah. wouldn't be surprised they do the same thing. And they, it's kind of a trope in certain comic books, even movies, but yeah. it, it works in the sense that, you know, it does give a plot twist, but you just don't know how they're going to twist that character to come back or change. Right. And Usually it's like, oh, they do the deeper dive of the villain helping out, does something crazy to screw up the mission or whatever it is, and then sacrifice themselves and showing the goodness. And then, or they do the complete, I'm just going to take over the world. Ha ha ha. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> there's no in between, it seems. It's always one extreme or the other. Right. But... <laughs> It's hard to be in the middle when you're already a supervillain. Yeah, exactly. It's like you're just built that way. <laughs> <laughs> you're number one? Um, we kind of touched on it. Okay. Uh, was Rick and William. I mm -hmm. just, I, you know, I thought they were adorable. I thought their, their little overcoming the, the cyberman-ness with love was, like, <laughs> really sweet. And I was just, I mean, that was the driving thing for the show, which I thought was really, you know, I really yeah. enjoyed the story. It was the driving part of the, the story that, you know, captivated you. It did captivate me as well. But yeah, that's part of my number one. I just loved Rick's comeback from being lobotomized and being able to help out Mark and destroy all the adapted people that Sinclair created in his sewer lab. Of all things, the sewer lab. They even mentioned <laughs> that at the very end, too. <laughs> And uh, I hope to see Rick come back soon. So apparently he's not dead like the other guys. He didn't go crazy and kill himself. He was crying. He was being restrained as Cecil yeah. and them were taking him away. Hopefully they don't take him and pick him apart like a test subject. Well, or something I mean, like that. it's Jonathan Groff, so he has to be back. Just so that you can play the Hamilton song in your head. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and the part of that number one was, I already mentioned it before, I just love that, you know, William found about Mark's powers and being invincible. Yeah. Give me a flight. Fly me around. And he just flies him out really quick. <laughs> here, here, you, you happy? That's it. <laughs> well, like, you know, he flew him out and you could hear him go, wee, wee, wee. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I would do the same thing if it was my friend. <laughs> yeah, right? He's like, yeah, thank you. Let's do it again. Can I wear the suit? No. <laughs> Please. And the last part would be, unfortunately, Mark loses Amber due to the issues of being invincible yet again. Okay, now how is it that William realizes instantly that it's Mark? Yeah, it's that Superman Amber thing, yeah. doesn't see it <laughs> at all. Well, the thing was is that William was right underneath him looking at Mark's jawline in the face. He was very close up to it where I guess Amber is from a distance. And then he heard the voice as he was fighting that I, kid. That was. I feel like if it were my boyfriend, I would know. And if, right away. All, I mean, really, all that's covered is his eyes. Yep. And you could see his hair. Yeah. Yeah, so I know. I, I feel like if it were my boyfriend, I would figure it out. It's like, I know that ass. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've seen the size of his package. It's not so much, but it's that's him. No, nah, no, nah, just kidding. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, those you would lips. think. I've kissed those lips. I know those exactly. Lips. <laughs> it's like a, a woman would know that right away. Honestly, a lot yeah. of guys, unless you're, 
you're you're homosexual male and you you're in relationship with that person you would know too it, it, anybody who's in relationship with that person yes you would know because of how they are it's like that was always the issue with lois lane and superman how mm-hmm. does she not realize <laughs> right. she's in love with superman but can't see it on clark it was like oh this comb over thing will do and these glasses <laughs> will cover it up no <laughs> I mean, if but I mean, at least in Superman, everybody doesn't notice it. In this one, like, oh look, his best friend realizes it in five seconds. Why Literally, he because girlfriend? he's known him so much and so long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, or maybe she does, <laughs> and she's not saying anything. No. But we do see her hurt in the bed, in the while well, she's laying in bed, and he comes yeah. in and he looks in, and she just acts as if she's asleep. Yeah, it, it's really strange. Really strange, but, but I don't think yeah, they sus- had suspension one on of one. disbelief. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we gotta throw that in there just for fun. <laughs> Plus, we gotta give him a heartbreak, I guess. Yeah, you know. So that's it with our top fives. Uh, you have you have a few notes here. Yeah, I have a few notes. Um, I love that Debbie confronted Nolan. That she wasn't just like yeah. She could easily have been just terrified by him and just worried and kept it all to herself. I mean, I know the alcohol helps you have a little bit of guts, but I, <laughs> she's she's fighting for herself and fighting for her marriage. Like, mm. I'm so proud of her for confronting him. And now I want to know what. I still want to know what happened. I still want to know if he was con- in control of himself. Like, there's a part of me that thinks maybe he wasn't in control of himself. Hmm. And what all went on that night. Yeah. It, it, it's keeps it, It's still stuck in my head that it makes me think that Nolan knew exactly what he was doing. But we're not seeing his reasoning and why he did what he did. It's very interesting. Yeah. You know, we've already known that he always kept himself aside from the Guardians. He wasn't a true Guardian. He just worked alongside with them. But maybe he saw them as a threat to the world? Yeah, I don't know. And then Because like- he's the one that sent from Viltrumite to go to a planet to protect it and be its sole protector. But he worked with these alongside these people. Now I guess he feels that his job is in danger from that. Maybe. And he had to take them out to be the sole, or if not him and his offspring, to be the sole protector of the said planet. Who knows? It's weird. <laughs> yeah, like I'm so curious. And then, you know, he got so mad when Debbie stormed off, mm-hmm. you know, punching a hole in the house. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, she was throwing those bottles at him. That was a waste of alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do a great, but, you know, because we get to see Debbie, she does go, and this part of my notes with, you know, to Nolan Soupmaker, Art actually gives her the information, and we see the breakdown of freshest blood and the oldest blood that was on the suit, and Art knew, and he goes, yeah, it was him. He struck first. Yep, he struck first, and they knew. I, did, I thought it was cool, though, that they went through each character, like, each of the Guardian's powers as they went, oh, this is this from this person. Oh, this is this from that. Like, I like I liked how that whole thing played out. Yeah, the friction from the speedster, the, how the cuts happen from the, uh, what was it, the bat guy or something? With the claws yeah, the, that he has or something? And, and the that, gold flex from the one yeah. costume. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like he knew because he's worked with these people either with their suits or knows their abilities, art, and he has that stuff to magnify all that. I mean, I'm a little suspect of his blood, like, you know, blood being five minutes older than the other blood. I don't know how much you can really tell that, but hey. Yeah, it is a comic. (laughs) Exactly. It was a good good way to get to the end. But it's pretty interesting how when Nolan actually sees her go to art and goes to visit Art, and you think, oh, he's going to punch a hole in his head. And he just shows some beer, and they just hang out and talk. And all we get is that verbal manipulation by Nolan to Art, because they've known each other for so many years. I think it's like, all right, well, I have an inside man, and I could have him cover up, so. Well, I also think he was threatening, like, he was threatening Art, like, the whole he was inadvertently like, he was choosing him. his word he was choosing his words very carefully yes so that art knew Nolan would kill him if he needed to yes yeah art knew that Nolan knew what art knew <laughs> right. as weird as it sounds and is kind of like a nonverbal standoff and Nolan verbally inadvertently telling him it's like yeah if you do something I'm gonna kill you <laughs> right like, <laughs> you're my friend but if you do something I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that must have been the most awkward beer 
hangout ever. Yeah. For poor Art. And I think Art probably shit his pants when Nolan first showed up behind him. Oh, I know. <laughs> before I, he held up the beer. The, was... the look on his face was like, oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how they could do that with an anime is pretty funny. Uh, you had another one? No, that's all my notes. We covered everything else. Yeah. The only other one would be Robot seeing Mahler, the Mahler twins in their talk about amplifying the process from the cells that, that he gave them. Apparently, he wants to increase the process to make this thing grow faster. Yeah. He's... So he has he has a reason behind that. I'm curious as to what it is. I am so curious what he's up to. Yeah. And we already talked about the Mahler twins arriving at the gravesite. That's the only thing that yeah. I had in there, too. But uh, the only question I had was, was Matt that kid that the father in the very first episode, who was a security guard, was worried because he was into drugs and doing all the bad things? Oh, it might have been. That's what I was thinking. I, I didn't go back to that. look. His name was Matt. So I have to look into that. So listeners, if you have any ideas and thoughts and you can throw <laughs> out some information, that'd be great. Because <laughs> I can't remember it. Let us know. Because <laughs> it gave me that vibe because it looked like, oh, I'm going to get in trouble for this again, again. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. Because apparently, you know, if they were talking about Beatles and stuff, then I'd know right away. Because apparently that's why they went to London, him and the father. Right. Oh, with that, we'll move on to quotes. You got a couple? I got a few. Debbie being every mom ever. No drinking, no drugs, and no sex. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then William. <laughs> Did I mention his teeth? Like little bricks of joy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's so it made cute. made me laugh so hard. That was so adorable. And then um, Mark basically telling the truth every time i try to be a hero i make things worse yeah that was to william when he was contemplating like he goes i don't want to be inv invincible anymore i just don't want to do it because it creates more issues and then yeah. he says that line yeah well first one for me is funny because it's that kitty <laughs> that gets changed in the beginning by sinclair but he's so drunk and he tries to go to the girls go you want a threesome it's like my dad has things named after him. I'm a legacy. And he looks over. Wrong building. Go to the other one. Sees the right building. <laughs> then he gets taken by Sinclair. He wakes up. And then Sinclair goes through his speech. But we don't see who it is. And the kid, just as abusive verbally as he is, he goes, Nerd? Who talks <laughs> like that? You do. You're a nerd, nerd. And he's like, Hey, you better let me go. Otherwise, my father will sue you in the Stone Age. <laughs> Yeah, even, I thought that was good. I thought that was good, too. Yeah, that, Cause that it was a showed, good... It showed typical college kids when they get drunk and rowdy. <laughs> yeah, especially <laughs> this privileged was, ones. This, this kid was typical of, like, the, the rich kid that is favored and is full of himself. But in the end, and, so, and well, at least he stopped himself when invincible. He threw himself on that spike once he realized what he was. Yeah, and that... That was pretty impressive that 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 character that we were introduced to as being such a D-bag had yeah. enough in him to kill himself when he realized what was happening to him. And what he was doing to others, too. Yeah. He, he just basically looked, he found out and realized, I'm a monster. Yeah. But then again, he couldn't even voice himself because they cut his vocal yeah. cords out. Uh, next one up would be Cecil saying, you're the most powerful man on the planet and you can't control him. And that was to Nolan about Mark handling Machine Man. Yeah. Meaning, hey, you're a terrible parent. <laughs> <You just. laughs> well, I don't think any parent can truly control their child. No. No. You have to realize they're individuals as it is. You're just trying to guide them in life. Yeah, just don't do what we did. <laughs> yeah. I mean, learn from my mistakes. No, nope, you're going to make them anyway. All right, whatever. <laughs> well, you just got to be there to comfort and hold them. Yeah. Last one I have would be Eve. Make the world you want to live in. Then she takes off. I think that's good. a good motivational statement right there. Yeah, that's a really good one. And that was to her parents, I believe, when she was ready to take off. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll move into feedback. And I see you got some. Yeah, we've got uh, Chris once again sent a text. It said that Mark's boyfriend got fucked up like that, though mm -hmm. I feel, or, I think he meant William's boyfriend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Though I feel like Mark just needs to come out to his girl to smooth the shit over because that would have fixed everything. But he can't. It was nice to see Eve make a difference, at least find her own way. The whole Eve storyline is more than like is more than likely to backfire on her in some way, shape, or form, though. Hmm. I definitely agree with the Eve storyline is going to backfire. 
Same here. Which stinks because she's so hopeful. Like she's she's our like hopeful good character. Yeah, yeah, and she's a guiding part of Mark. Yeah, and I think deep down she has feelings for Mark to some degree. It's just that they're not showing themselves. Because yeah, every I mean, time she tries to go to Mark, he's always looking after Amber, and she gets that. Uh, I don't know if yeah. it had to be for the fact that it's like, hey, I have a friend that could actually talk to about this. You know, it's like one of those sensitive guys. I think it might be a little bit of both because, you know, she went to him right as she was breaking up with Rex. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're going through a breakup, there's always a part of you kind of looking to the next. Which so is you not feel a, so alone. Yeah, yeah. It's not a really good thing because you got that rebound aspect. Of right. It. <laughs> right. And then you but realize then. it's like, what have I done? <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah. They, she, yeah, she's kind of mixed emotions at this point. Yeah, dealing with the breakup of Rex, dealing with her parents, changing her life. I think she right now she just needs somebody to rely on, but she still has an admiration and feelings for Mark to some degree. Whether or not they come out, who knows? Maybe she, Mark will come around and realize this some way. I mean, and she has, with the crappy parents and the crappy boyfriend, she has no reason to be as positive and good as she is. So it is just awesome to see her be like that. And so when all this backfires, I'm going to feel so bad. Yeah. <laughs> Same here. I, I just don't want anything bad to happen between both of them. Amber could go away on the wayside because she's, you know, related to one of the enemies. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know. If he wanted to take over, maybe he's made things a better place. Maybe he stopped burning down the buildings. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> kind of like that Doctor Doom aspect. I want to take over the world. Yeah, that's I have more a perfect likely. vision, but in this case, he's not destroying anything. He's trying to manipulate and... When people come up with the idea of a perfect world, in their mind, usually looks like as like a dictatorship or hostile takeover for others. <laughs> True. All right. Cool. Well, thanks, Chris, for setting it out. We appreciate it. Yes, we do. Now we got some uh, live feedback from Steve, so we will got to hear Steve. what Mr. Steve Brown has to say. Hey, Mark and Jamie, this is Steve, and this is for Invincible Episode 6. Uh, you look kind of dead. Uh, it took me two watches to figure out that D.A. Sinclair was just another student at the, the college. I mean, you know, she said uh, he's or they told her he's on some kind of genius grant and he makes sure everybody knows that. So uh, I didn't it just didn't dawn on me until the second watch. So, oh, he's just another student. Um, and that's why Amber acted the way she did toward him and stuff. But um, interesting storyline here with uh, um Omni Man, you know, I wonder what happened to the tailor. Did he do something to him? Um, I'm kind of scared for his wife now too, because she figured out the truth, and uh, we're gonna have to see what uh, what's gonna become of her and uh, in this situation. So, yeah, um, it's great. I, how many episodes do we have? I think we've got nine episodes. This is an hour long, forty five minute show, and we're getting a, a really good story and. It's holding my attention. Uh, I did have to watch this one twice to, to be able to kind of put some things together. But, uh, you know, we've seen Mark kind of get his butt kicked a, a little bit. But we've also seen him be triumphant. So it's, it's going to be interesting uh, how they develop that in him. And, uh, yeah, so uh, we'll see if we hear any more. And uh, now I guess his best friend knows his secret. So what's going to come of that, too? All right, I uh, can't wait to hear you guys talk about this one uh, later. Cool. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Steve. That was great. Good views yeah, and good, good thoughts. It made me think, too, when he was talking about certain things, especially with D.A. Sinclair and how it's like, yeah, he didn't realize he was, because he looked older, if you think about it, in comparison yeah. to some people. Plus, what D.A. was actually saying within the class to the professor and being retaliatory and I could have gotten into Yale or Harvard. When, what is Whatever it was, offered me a lab. I was like, well, go there. <laughs> exactly, right? But the funny part is, it's like, oh, wow. Well, I guess it's not its own world. You do have Yale and Harvard, so I guess it's canon in this world. <laughs> yeah. There, there are certain things from the real world that keep getting pulled in. Yeah. Like Reddit. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> <laughs> so all that could be part of this particular world. Maybe it's an offshoot, an alternate reality or something. <laughs> uh, if only we could get in touch with Robert Kirkman and say, hey, when you wrote this, did you think about it? What's well, interesting think with Steve is he's worried about um, Debbie. And I never thought that – I just never crossed my mind that Nolan might actually hurt Debbie. Well, I was thinking Nolan would hurt Debbie, if anything. 
or if anything, Debbie would hurt herself because she's yeah. dealing with distress. And like you said before, she's drinking like crazy. Yeah. Like I can see her hurt herself. I just didn't think I couldn't, I just didn't think Nolan would hurt her. I think he's got too, I think he's got too much love for her. He has too much love. And that was, remember when we last recorded, we, you were talking about the monster coming on and how Nolan wasn't going to go and stop it. And they were where in France or something. Yeah. And let the, oh, let them do their job. And he, and she was just like, do your job. He's like, if you love me, well, no, 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 no. And then next thing you know, it's like, oh, okay. And then they finally came to stop the monster and they did. But it was him testing her and her love for him. And I th think that's his anchor to, to some degree. Agreed. But yeah. And with her, it's more about trust and love where it's with him. It's more the trust. Because who knows if he's separated, you know, he's got Mark and he's more concentrating on Mark than he is with his own wife. Because as we see, she's being neglected. How he's hardly ever home. He's always out there with Mark or something. And when he does come home, it's like, oh. And then he sees her a mess. And he's, you know, now he's suspicious and he knows that she knows something. So I I really wouldn't want to see Nolan hurt her. But no, I don't. how far is he going to go with, like, not getting this out there that he did this? Right. I really, in my gut, hope he doesn't hurt her. Like, I don't think he could do it. I really I hope he could do it. I think he could do it. Maybe he gets somebody else to do it. Not, oh, yeah, that's possible. Like Art. Ooh, that would be tough. Ooh, yeah. Poor Art. Yeah, put Art in that prediction. <laughs> A predict a predicament <laughs> prediction <laughs> or prediction either all right well that was our coverage on invincible season one episode six yeah that did kind of hurt <laughs> yeah. uh but uh, we'll move on to uh podcast recommendations so uh, what do you have um i'm gonna recommend this one called creepy it is recordings of a bunch of the creepy pastas Hmm. They dramatize a whole bunch, like bunch of creepy pastas and just hmm. good fun horror. Yeah, cool. It's like readings of like a script or a screenplay or something. Oh yeah, they put it. Like, it depends on the story. Like some stories, it's just one person reading the whole thing, and other stories, they have more of a cast and stuff like that. That's cool. It's good. Yeah. It's like remember those books or comics that you used to get with a record. Just read along with the yeah. yeah. It, it kind of reminds me of that when I hear those or play act because Marvel had one on Stitcher where they did like the uh, Wolverine series or something that was pretty good to listen to until they stopped it midway and I'm like, what happened to the story? <laughs> I hate when they do those. I'm like, please just finish the just, ending. Yeah. Wrap it up for us, please. <laughs> yeah, I needed something to listen to on my drive to and from work. Right. I don't want to listen to this. Like, 12-hour book reading. <laughs> like, the stand was, like, 40-something hours or something. I don't know. <laughs> I did the Game of Thrones books in audio format, so... Those yeah, were... those audio books are good, but I, it's funny. I can't really be there listening for hours and hours on end. I prefer to read. If it's something pretty short within about maybe 10 hours, and I could wrap it up in over, like, a two-week point, you know... Yeah. Unless I'm going on a long trip and I'm driving for hours on end, then you could get it done. But I don't want to be there like listening forever. But I yeah, just don't have as much time to sit and read, but I can have it playing while I'm washing dishes or something like that. Yeah, that that'll work out. Too. That's why that I've gotten more books in with the audio version than physically reading. Well, the technology we're in today, right? <laughs> you know, makes some things more convenient. Well, kind of similar to like uh, people listening to us on podcasts, right? <laughs> And with that, I'll uh, add in House Podcastica with their coverage of The Handmaid's Tale. So I believe Wendy, Daphne, and Jason had covered uh, or did a catch-up version before the new season comes into play. And that will be released this week as well. So check them out on the Podcastica Network with House Podcastica covering Handmaid's Definitely Tale. Definitely listen to them. They are yeah. great. I, unfortunately, I tried watching The Handmaid's Tale and it's very depressing and I do not. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I think I'm. It's been sitting there where I've been ignoring it because I'm like, and I think I've made the decision that it's just too heavy for me. But I'll listen to the podcast. I'll listen to the catch up podcast and see. Yeah, same here. <laughs> I I listened to Lizzie and Diana at one point to see when they were covering it after Kristen had started covering it and to see what it was like. And my mother, I've watched a few episodes with my mom when she 
was home and she had it on. I'd be like, oh, what's going on? And I watched it and I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm like, damn, this is just so heavy. I, I was like, I can't really invest it. I know The Walking Dead and like, you know, Another Life and those shows that I watch are pretty heavy at times. But with this, it's so, it, to me, it would be draining me emotionally. Yeah. Because I could separate fantasy from reality. And with this, it hits home on a lot of reality points. And I'm like, no, I can't put myself through that. <laughs> so, yeah, but we can listen to their podcast and then know what everybody else is talking about and pretend we watch the show. <clears throat> exactly. <laughs> but if if you listeners that are out there have read The Handmaid's Tale and really enjoy that, I highly recommend it. If you are like us where don't want to really watch the show. And I did this, too, with with uh, Mr. Blog when he did Under the Comic Covers because they would cover comics that I didn't buy or read, but I enjoyed with what him and his partner did. They yeah. they went over ah. each, and I missed that show. I missed that show so much, and I, I read almost every comic that they covered because that some of those stories were just amazing, and once they stopped their show, I kind of fell off the podcast, or the comics, and like, I've been thinking, I've had a little more time, so I've yeah. been thinking about getting back into it, because, like, some of the storylines, I really want to know what happened with them, because they were just so interesting. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. To, if you could actually play that part of just, like, listening to somebody explain it to you and go over the story, it's interesting. I, I like that aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I because I had a pull list, and I'm like, I'm not adding to these polls. <laughs> So I listen to somebody talk about cheap. it. Yeah, it's not. Well, it wasn't even the idea of collecting because just the cost of a comic. <laughs> yeah, wow, they're so insanely expensive. I'll be honest. I weighed a lot. I do a lot of the. I was doing a lot of the digital ones just because I didn't have room in my house to store all yeah. of the comics, and yeah. then I'd wait. I'd wait a week until the price dropped. So I was always a week behind. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Or a month behind. Or uh, you do what I do and just get the whole trade at the very end. You wait it out until the <laughs> end and get it then. Yeah, done that too. Which is where <laughs> I'm at when I go ba when I go back to finish these up. I'm going to go back to and get the trades. Yeah, that that's the best way to do it. Uh, trades are the best way. That way, at least you have like a if you get the hardcovers, you have like a book and, and like you stated the yeah. last time. At least you have that to present to yourself and people are like, oh, now look at your bookshelf. And go, they read a lot, and then look, <laughs> oh, what is this? Oh, Bernie writes in his Frankenstein and other <laughs> stories. <laughs> That's not a book. Yes, it is. It's hardcover. <laughs> lock and key. Yeah, and it's like a whole ton. Actually, lock and key. I actually have to watch that. I haven't watched it That's at cool. all, and I, I should. It. A Lock and Key is one of my absolute favorite comics. Absolute favorite. And they just started a crossover with Sandman, which is one of yes. my other absolute favorites. And I haven't gotten a chance to read the first issue yet, but I'm dying because it's two of my absolute favorite comics together. And it, it just totally nerding out over it. Yeah. Gaiman doing that was pretty cool. I'm curious about it. I seen it on the, uh, the rack when I went to my comic shop and I'm like, I'm tempted but I'm like, no, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just wait until it comes on hardcover or pray that Neil does another live thing at Bard College up in Rhinebeck where he teaches. And I could go see him and they'll sell it and it'll be signed and you can actually meet him like I did the okay, last time. Okay, I'm coming time. with you next time. <laughs> well, I, I did that with uh, how to pick up girls at parties that – I went to that and you got to meet Neil and you got to see him interview the director and we got to see the whole movie. That's amazing. He's he's definitely on my I need to meet list. Like I said, he it's like, oh, well, I'll just be here. I want to sit in on your class. <laughs> <laughs> I need to talk to you. Can I get a picture? Wait a minute. You're here for the class. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, he's a teacher at Bard College up in Rhinebeck, New York, and uh, he does, uh, I think they're all literature-based classes that and courses he does, but the bookstore carries all his trades, and he has signed them all. And all you have to do is go in there with a student ID, and you can purchase them, or if they have live events listeners, and if you're in the area where he does some sort of uh, spoken word or interview or some sort of thing that's open to the public that you pay into which usually it's like 20 bucks or something just to get in or if you pay the higher tier you get in you get front row and things of that nature they have everything out there ready to sell so he he signs every every copy of those of those trades I, that's how i was able to get the sandman big thick hardcover volume one how to pick up girls 
at parties and what was it? Uh, forgetting the name of it. But there's so yeah, many. <laughs> there's so many, exactly. So with Sandman, I never read it, so I was able to get this hardcover, so I started reading that. I but that love it's Sandman. Such, such a huge thick thing. And I was like, you know what? For a hundred dollars just for this one and it's signed by the artist and yeah. author, do it. And so. Gaiman is absolutely one of my favorite authors. So and the cool thing with Sandman is it was so early in his career, you can see him progress as a writer as yes. the comic develops. Which is really cool. Yeah, I think you see that with a lot of authors that have been around for a long time and that, how they started out initially. And same thing with Kirkman, too, and what he did. Because yeah. he, you know, he started off with Invincible, but he had done other comics, but only lasted like one issue, and then they, they cut him off. Invincible and Walking Dead were the only two that lasted the longest for him. And- Boyd, has he made money off of them? <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. Which is pretty cool, too, because think about bringing something back. He's doing a, uh, what was it? Is it Skybound X? I think it is. And they're doing specific. We're getting um, a Walking Dead with, what's her name from the video game? Clementine. Clementine. There you go. There are going to be issues about that. I, yeah, I saw that. And then there's going to be another issue where they're doing an issue number 75 of The Walking Dead. Kirkman made the joke of when in the very beginning, he goes, oh, it'll be aliens. Aliens are the cause of this. Well, he's going to put that in this universe of these few issues or whatever, where Rick comes face to face with, you know, aliens, physical aliens, like they did in issue 75, where you got a color insert, where, you know, you yeah. saw the governor, you saw Lori, you saw all of them, and they were part alien, or that they were taken to a space station or something. I love that he followed through on that. That was so funny. And that was meant as a whimsical joke yeah. for that. And that was because one of the uh, people in the, that wrote in stated, hey, where are these aliens? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he owned up to it, and he did it, which is pretty cool. All right. So, well, to submit your feedback, just go to our website. Go to panelspixelspodcast.com. Or to submit your theories and feedback, you can just go straight to our Facebook group, which the actual website actually redirects you to anyway. So it's <laughs> facebook.com slash panels to pixels. Leave us feedback. Yeah, so literally every week I do this. I post a picture or an image of the episode that we're covering, since we're covering two at this point. So far. <laughs> yeah, I put in separately. So you could just go according to whichever picture you see, Invincible or Falcon and Winter Soldier at the moment, and just put in your comment below and we'll read it. Or you could just go to our uh, email address and just write us an email, and that's panels to pixels one at gmail.com. And that's panels, the two is spelled T O, and pixels in the number one at gmail. So you could just write out a regular email, or you could just record your voice and send it as an attachment, and we'll play it. And we'll comment on it like we just did with what Steve did, because Steve wasn't available for recording at this point. Or you could just go to our YouTube page, and all you have to do is search YouTube, and just search YouTube for Panels to Pixels podcast. If you search Panels to Pixels, it'll take you to another group of guys from England, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> They uh they cover everything within like comics turn to like video games, cartoons, and they don't really put out very often, but I put out weekly the podcast as it is, so you can listen to it there. And then you could easily just put in in the comments below of the uh the video from the previous episode that we put up, and then we'll just read them just the same. Great idea. While you're there, if you if you like the content we're doing, please subscribe or just give us a thumbs up. That would be great. And as you all know, because you're hearing it now, we could be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast player of choice at this point. If ratings are available, just give us one if you're able to do so. We really appreciate it. And, well, where can listeners hear us? Well, Jamie, you could be just heard here. here. <laughs> Only here. <laughs> here for now. Uh, I'm hoping other people will pick you up. You know, she's always welcome to be on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. All she has to do is come up with an idea of a movie she wants to do. Yeah, I gotta figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I'm sure our other friends will have you on just the same. Absolutely. So uh, where else can I be heard? Well, I could be heard right here on Panels to Pixels on the Next Level Network, as always. But you could also hear me, as I mentioned, on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, and that can be found on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network where I cover action movies, adventure movies, fantasy, suspense, and thriller films. I usually let my co-host pick it, and it's usually, what's your favorite movie, or what movie do you want to cover? It could be a bad movie for all I care. 
<laughs> I have not Dead done a movie fun. that we had a bash or somebody just surprisingly just give me one. I'm hoping listeners would be like, hey, can you guys do this? Sure. I haven't heard anybody yet, but it'd be interesting. But we cover those and uh, we have a good time with it. This week, you should be getting Face Off as well as Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. Ooh. I'm hoping to move on to the new movie with Odenkirk called Nobody. So mm -hmm. I'm looking to do that. And there's a few others that are in the mix that will keep you apprised about. All you have to do is go to Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on Facebook or even the Pirate Core Entertainment Network's Facebook page or com, and that will lead you to wherever you need to with all that media. Well, that's pretty much our show, and I just want to say thank you, everybody, for listening and being here. I'm Mark. I'm Jamie. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Talk to you soon. Bye.